Good afternoon and welcome to another Moment with Madison. James Madison, 4th President of the United States. In 1776, <clears throat> June, Richard Henry Lee of Virginia proposed Second Continental Congress that the Congress should declare independence from Britain. After much discussion, they were able to find consensus, and my soon-to-be best friend, 33-year-old Thomas Jefferson, was called upon to put pen to paper and draw up a draft. Many of the details he all included were altered, but it is this sentence that defined our struggle. This is, arguably, the most important sentence that has ever been written. In 1776, virtually nobody held that idea. In your modern times, how many people don't? In 1776, at the age of 25, I enlisted in the Orange County Militia. I was 5 foot 4, 100 pounds, full of enthusiasm and determination. As many young men, I was brash and eager. I bragged about how excellent our musketry fire was and how we would easily take on the British regulars. However, I personally, I personally was given to ailments and fits. There were times when I was bedridden for days at a time. Clearly, the military life was not for me. Instead, I concluded that I should become the best informed politician and betook myself to extensive readings of history and philosophy so that I should be ready to build a new nation when the war was over. As a son of the wealthiest planter in Orange County, I was easily elected to the Virginia House of Legalities later that year. This is where I met Thomas Jefferson, eight years my senior, almost a foot taller. He must have made a sight walking together. Him, six foot two, Strong, noble of features next to, next to me. <laughs> uh, we became very close friends. We were fascinated with technology and science, the details of agriculture and the politics of mankind. By the end of our lives, we spent so much time together that he reserved a room in Monticello solely for Dolly and me. <laughs> In 1776, we were writing a new constitution for Virginia when George Mason proposed a Declaration of Rights that included tolerance for all religions. I demurred. To tolerate something is to imply that it is an inferior and that at a later date you might decide not to tolerate it anymore. Instead, I insisted that the role of government was to accept all religions as equal and stay completely out of their affairs, as I insisted, and as was eventually passed. All men are equally entitled to the free exercise of religion according to the dictates of conscience. This was my first major political success. The list of rights that Mason drew up are generally familiar to most of you. The one detail you might miss is the use of the phrase, when men enter into a state of society, they gain these rights. <clears throat> Entering into a state of society means that they are not enslaved anymore. This was his clever linguistic trick to avoid having to use the word slavery. That Mason should have to write this way is no surprise. He had to write what the citizens of Virginia would accept, otherwise they'd ignore him. What is surprising is that Thomas Jefferson didn't. I was not in Congress when they passed the Declaration of Independence, so I cannot comment on the discussion. But somehow, a room filled with men that included numerous slave owners passed a unanimous declaration that all men are created equal with no exceptions at all. Isn't that interesting? Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure. We'll talk more about the rights of man in a future time here at A Moment with Madison.